Before I was a city councilor, I was a union organizer. And the president of my union expected at the end of every year that I would be able to give her a report on the work that I did and what we did for that year and what we thought we would do for the, the next year. I, I actually liked that practice. It was something that I, I grew accustomed to. And because of that, I continued to do it after I got elected, except I don't get to go to one boss. I have 620,000 bosses. And the best way that I can get a hold of them is through these organizations. <coughs> the very first thing that I'd like to talk about is a piece of legislation that uh, is very near and dear to me, and we're going to work very hard to get it done uh, this year. It specifically, I think, uh, will help turn around the, the entire economy, to help us get out of our recession quicker. Um, Boston's been doing a very good job of getting out of the recession. I think if we get this done, we'll move out even faster and help all of our neighbors. I call it Invest in Boston. Here's the contract. As a city, we spend $2.6 billion a year. $2.6 billion. That's our police, our fire, our schools, our parks, our streets, right? Getting rid of the snow and then fixing the potholes that come after the snow shows up. Of that $2.6 billion, one billion of it is sitting in the bank right now. One billion. So I decided, let's look into how we figure out which banks get that money. So here's what we do to, to decide. We ask them three very basic yet important questions. Is our money safe? Because you don't want the money in the bank adjacent and then it disappears after you make, after you make the deposit. Right? What's the interest rate? <coughs> when you're at a billion dollars, you're negotiating rates. It's major league money. And then in the event of an emergency, think what we all saw on TV with Katrina or maybe with Hurricane Sandy in, in New Jersey and parts of New York, can you pull out a significant amount of that money to deal with it? The kind of emergency you never want to experience here in Boston. But that's all we ask. Here's what we don't ask. We don't ask them what they're lending to small businesses in Boston is. We don't ask them what they're lending to homeowners in Boston is. We don't ask them if they're refinancing loans so that people will pay 13 to 14% interest rate. They pay a 4% that the market asks for. That's not a gift. That's the market cost of money. We don't ask them if they hire people who live in Boston. We don't have to ask them if they support development projects. We don't ask them if they have branches in Boston. We don't ask them if they have ATMs in Boston. We literally don't know the level, what level of investment they have as a business in the city where the money is coming from. I'd like to change that. I'd like to ask those questions. So legislation I filed will, will say that when the banks come looking for that $1 billion in deposit, you can't think of a bank that doesn't want it. And when they come look for that deposit, they just have to let us know. They have to answer those questions so we can see 
what the level of investment in our neighborhoods are. The same neighborhoods that the money comes from. But then we'll go a step further. When that those are answered, when we find out that Bank A, Bank B, and Bank C all are applying for the money, but Bank A is the one that's really investing in the city. That's really lending to small businesses and to homeowners. Well then we would give Bank A preferential treatment on those deposits. The idea is if I were a billionaire, every bank in the country would approach me and try to convince me that investing with them is in my best interest. They would define that by making me more money. That would be the definition of my best interest if I were a billionaire. Well, the city of Boston is that billionaire. But the way we get to define it is by helping all of our neighbors and all our communities do well. The same place as the money comes from. The last piece of this legislation is that it creates a bank commission where they would have to meet in public. So when the banks come and put the applications forward, all of this is done in public. So if you felt like being there, you could. On top of that, they would have to take public testimony. So if you happen to have an experience with a certain bank that's positive, you can share that. If you happen to have one that's negative, you can also share that. The same way council meetings are open to the public, council hearings are open to the public, the same way hearings at the state house are open to the public, the same concept. When we're making decisions on a billion dollars of deposits, it's your money. You should know where it's going and what. So that's invest in Boston. I do believe that if we start investing in banks that are showing an interest in investing in our city, that you'll start to see more banks showing that interest. Because every bank that you can think of, and I already know this, wants a piece of that action. So they all start investing in there is opposition to this. Some of the bigger banks don't like the idea. But there's plenty of banks that do business in our neighborhoods who have come out and support us, looking to be judged under those terms. So that's Invest in Boston. If it interests you and if it intrigues you, if you believe like I do, that if we leverage a billion of your dollars to invest in our communities, that that's better for our city, then I would ask that you let your city councilors know. Everyone in this room is represented by five city councilors far larger one district. That's an awful lot of power for each person here. And I would ask that you would just let them know, because at some point, I'm going to be moving for a vote on this, and I'd like to get it through the council. The next point I want to talk about work that I've done, and, 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 and frankly, this one is really not my plan to take. I was just lucky enough to ch chair a committee called Labor, Youth Affairs, and Health. Because of that, I have the opportunity to lead the city council's efforts around youth jobs. <laughs> and it's really easy to do because there isn't a member of the council who doesn't believe in, 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 in youth jobs. And our city happens to be led by a man in Mamanino who is recognized as the national leader in the question of youth jobs. He's recognized as that. And here's why. Last summer, over 10,000 young people in the city of Boston were able to find a summer job. Over 10,000 young people per capita is the highest in the country. You should be very proud of that. Mainly because my grandmother had a little saying for me, which was, idle's hands do the devil's work. Right? We've all heard this. Maybe they weren't talking about you. Maybe they were talking about me. But they, I know I heard it growing up. So the idea that 10,000 young people who otherwise may not have been doing something constructive had summer employment is, a, is something we should all be proud of. Here's I'll give you the buzz. 14,000 young people applied for work. There's more than 14,000 young people in the city, but it's 14,000 young people who showed interest, filled out the paperwork, did everything they were asked to do. 10,000 got to work, highest in the, in the country. What happened to those 4,000? I'll tell you what happened. My first year on the city council, we got $3 million from the federal government for, for youth summer jobs, for youth jobs. $3 million in my first year. I've only been there three years. My second year, zero. My third year, zero. I'm in my fourth year now. You know what I expect to be getting from the federal government? <laughs> yes, zero. And I, give me that $3 million. You know what I can do with those 4,000 kids who didn't get work? We all know, it's easy math. 
I will ask you to do something. We know that there's an open U.S. embassy because John Kerry is now the Secretary of State. It doesn't matter to me what political party you affiliate yourself with, if any at all. <coughs> I don't think it's partisan to think about a young person having a job or something. I don't actually see that as a very partisan issue. I would ask that you would ask anyone you're considering to support, because they're all going to ask for you to vote. Throw on the list. Hey, young people in our city deserve these opportunities, and we'd like you to be a champion in Washington, D.C., to bring back the funding you used to. You don't have to even give me more. Just give me back what you used to do, not that long ago. The last piece I'll talk about, and I'll, you know, I'll wrap it up, is that the committee I chair is called Labor, <coughs> Youth Affairs, and Health. Um, as I said at the beginning, I'm a former union organizer, uh, volunteer youth coach. Actually, me and Aaron, your state rep, met that way. He was coaching the North End Dodge, and I was coaching the Jamaica Plain Angels. That's how we met before we were elected to anything. Yeah, I'll say that. And the health pieces I'm on, I also was a healthcare organizer. I'm a lifelong Bostonian, I'm a lifelong asthmatic. <coughs> we all know that that's very common. I say that because every person in this room, either you have asthma, someone in your family does, <coughs> or you, you definitely know someone who does, who lives in this city. Why? Why is that the case? I reached out to Children's Hospital, our Children's Hospital, right down the street, right in Longwood Medical Area. And I just asked them, talk to me about asthma. You know what they said? Over 50%, 50 percent of the kids who spend the night at Children's Hospital do so because of asthma. Over 50%. Many of us are raising children now. Many of us have raised children. You can think of a number of reasons why a child might spend the night at a hospital. You don't want it to happen, but you can think of those reasons. All of those reasons added together don't use asthma. Working with your district counselor, Sal Martino, who's also a lifelong asthmatic. We've been moving a few issues, and one of them is they're going to be coming to the fore soon. The city of Boston is part of Suffolk County. Suffolk County happens to be the third worst county in the country when it comes to diesel pollution in the air. The third worst in the country. This country includes New York City, Miami, and Los Angeles, and they beat us. <coughs> we all can think of the smog when we think of LA, right? You know that picture? Well, it's a myth. Boston's number three. So we did more research. How, why is that? And what does this lead to? It's not just asthma. Strokes, heart disease, cancer, all related to this pollution. So we ask you to go running outside, walking outside, bicycling outside. But you still have to breathe that air. You don't get away from it. You don't escape it. Turns out one industry is responsible for close to 50% of that pollution. One industry. Construction. Vehicles, what's coming out of the back of those vehicles is poison. And it's causing 40 to 50% of that pollution that puts us number three in the nation. <coughs> what are we doing about it? We filed legislation that said, would say that if you want to do business here in Boston, that you would have to do two things. One, have a vehicle that was built post 07. They figured it out by then, regulations were in place, and it's done. They're not, those vehicles aren't emitting that poison. Or, because not everybody can do that, or a simple retrofit, for which there's federal money to do. For instance, waste management, the, the garbage collection, trucks, complete overhaul, all on federal money. They're all retrofit. If you do that, you do business here in the city. The city of Boston is leading the way. The city of Boston has already retrofitted its food. So when you see that fire truck at a sweet sweeper, it's been retrofitted. And so we feel if we did it, you should do it too. <clears throat> and that'll cut our pollution rates drastically. And then you'll start to see better numbers when it comes to heart disease, cancer, lung disease, and asthma right in our city. Um, that's another thing I'd like you to talk to some of your counselors about and make sure that they know your interest, if you're interested in that. The last piece health related that I'm gonna spend a lot of time this year on is, uh, I do a lot of stuff with young people. And I can think of a number, a number of things young people do that's really positive in our communities. We can all think of it. But I focus on the things I want to fix. What is that? Violence, substance abuse, suicides. You know that we have twice the number of suicides in Massachusetts and homicides? Twice? And that's completed, not attempted. 
Most suicides don't actually, aren't, thankfully, aren't successful. But completed suicides twice the number. What's at the root of this? I'm speaking general terms, and I understand that. But what's at the root of this? For a lot of these instances, mental illness. Undiagnosed and untreated. Substance abuse. Many people self-medicate, whether it's liquor or an illegal substance. Violence. If you don't care for yourself, why would you care for the person next to you? Now violence becomes an option. Suicides. Again, not caring for yourself. Not having feelings for yourself that you should have. 20% of our high school students in the city of Boston, 20% admit to thinking about suicide. So if you think it's not happening at home, think again. That's one in five. And that's one in five who admit it. Would you admit it? You know the answer. So it's more than 20%, right? What do I want to do about it? First, I admit it to you I'm an asthmatic. Easily. I don't have a problem with it. Walk around my eyes and my hair, I don't care. I'll tell you about it. Who here would freely share that they had a mental illness? Stand up and just share it. Why not? Why not? There's a stigma, right? Because there's a stigma <coughs> attached to it. We have to eliminate that stigma because that stigma stops people from getting treatment. And that lack of treatment leads to things that we don't want in our society. So we have to get them treated. So I'm working this year with 40 different organizations that either offer mental health services or advocates around <coughs> to figure out how do we eliminate that stigma? How do we talk to our young people and say, hey, you had a bad day, you have a bad week, join the club if you had a bad month, but you don't have to make drastic decisions based on that, and there's help available to it. Tell parents they can bring their kids someplace like the community health center, because you can. But we have to work on that stigma so that people feel okay accepting the fact that Junior might have something, or that mom might have something, or that your brother or your sister might have, or your friend, and that you can seek help for that. Uh, those are the issues I'm focusing on. Uh, this year. I just thank you all for your time. I would like to thank many of you for allowing me to do the job that I love because many of you were proactively helping me get there and helping me stay there and I'm grateful for that and I thank you. Um, and if you haven't supported me in the past, I still would like to earn your support as we move forward. Um, and, and I'm just so blessed and honored to be one of your city councilors. Uh, I just I what I got in the back of this sheet of paper. Um, I will admit that it's my blatant attempt to have you take home something that has my name and my picture in it. Uh, but it's the phone number you use the most if you see the back. So I talked about legislation. I get right in the weeds on constituent services. And when <coughs> nine times out of ten, we're calling one of these people to try to get it done. I didn't want to, you know, these numbers don't need to be a secret. You can have them. You can also call them yourself. They work for you just like I do. Um, and Frankly, if you call them, as well as I call them, as well as Aaron, as well as Sal, as well as Nicole, more likely your issue will get treated quicker. Uh, so that's why you have it. But thank you for the time. Uh, I appreciate it. So, so the question was about late night trash pickup. Uh, I've been trying to get a home rule moved, a home rule petition moved that would allow the city to regulate the hours of commercial trash pickup. I've been trying. Uh, it's, it's strange, but commercial trash pickup is decided by the state. The hours are regulated by the state. Residential trash pickup is regulated by your city, which is why residential trash pickup tends to have between seven in the morning and no later than 5 p.m. Usually 3 p.m. for most of the neighborhoods, the residential. The commercial is regulated by the state, and I can't actually think of many regulations on that they've attached to it. Um, until the, the, that we get granted from the state the authority as a city to regulate those hours, we can't. We actually can't regulate it I've been trying to move a home rule petition to give us that authority because I can't think of a more local issue than trash uh, pickup. That's clearly a local issue, uh, you know, but uh, it isn't your urban legislators who are against you on this one. Many suburban legislators, for some reason, aren't uh, willing to give on that.
I think it keeps letting folks like me know. I'm already on your side. I, I wrote, I've written the legislation. I just can't get it through. But also, your other representatives know, your other state senators, but I, the, the warning I give you is that most of them would be supportive. It's just, for instance, Aaron is one of 160. Anthony's one of 40. And somehow have to convince the other side of the state to let Boston do. It's, it's a sick, I'm very frustrated by it. I am. Uh, yeah, and you know, maybe when you see folks running for statewide office show up, you might want to ask them to show some leadership on this issue. It's very frustrating, and it's just very frustrating this, that I can't bring relief to neighbors like North End. It's not just North End, Back Bay, Beacon Hill, South End, that all call my office with the same complaint. All I have right now the ability to do is call the company and yell and scream. You know? Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, the, the issues that you're involved in all sound very worthwhile, but I wanted to kind of ask a question about something else, which is the, the issue about noise and, and drinking, and, and this neighborhood suffers a lot from the after effects of people becoming completely out of control when they're drinking too much. And my impression, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I, and I'm not a sort of a political person, but I, I have to take my hat off to Councilor Lamatina and Representative Mikowitz because especially Lamatina has been really uh, sort of got the message from the neighborhood and was really active in trying to bring about some changes. So my hat's off to them. But I had the impression, maybe I'm wrong about this, what happened to Arroyo? Arroyo and his guy used to come to the meetings all the time and talk in a very kind of friendly and supportive way, but I never heard anything about him taking any kind of a leadership position on this to help this neighborhood. So maybe you can set me straight on that. But that's the impression I have, that you actually, I mean, I, I understand you're at large, so you have a lot of things to do. Yeah. So maybe it, it's okay that it's not a priority, but I just want to. I wouldn't say that it's not a priority. Um, you <coughs> certainly aren't the only neighbor who struggles with it. Mission Hill struggles with it. Uh, parts of Beacon Hill, because of the Southern University students struggle with it. Austin Brighton struggles with it. Um, the legislation that Sal wrote, I was a co-sponsor of, uh, and we were able to get it through, but it was appropriate for Sal to be the leader on that legislation as the, the, the city council of the district, and that was the appropriate way to do it, but I was a co-sponsor of it, and I did support it. What you're speaking about that Sal did, I wasn't supporting. Okay, because you're a, good, you're a good public speaker. You know, just a few words here and there from you, if you had a little bit higher profile, it might help everybody. Yeah, I, you should know that it's one person with a staff of five in the whole city. Um, and so, I, I would ask you not to take lightly the elder staff of five. I have missed very few meetings in my three years that I've been in office, very few. And that's with only five people uh, working for me. So it's only six of us when we count me. Dave Kubiak, five Back to the issue of the uh, commercial trash pickup regulations. You're making it sound like the state legislators are against it, but has it actually been approved by the city council? <coughs> has the home rule petition been approved by so the city council? So it was approved. Council? And if not, why not? It was approved once in the 90s uh, and ignored by the state. Um, it has not been approved again. I can't answer you why. You're asking me to speak into the mindset of another human being. I can tell you I write the legislation. I can tell you I offer it. And I can tell you I, I fight like hell to get it to get it passed. But in this case, the so far stops at the city council, not yet at the state. Yeah, that is true. But it's it's very difficult to explain to you why Council X wouldn't support it. Oh, you, right, you have to ask. So so get, getting back to this yeah. question, what can we do? We have to petition our city councilors, especially our own district council, and our, our three, at four, sorry, at yeah. five city Well, everyone in this room has five councils. You have a district councilor, uh, Sal, who's a really good friend of mine, I think a great guy, and, and myself plus three other right. citywide so councilors. So we need to petition them to support you the do. home rule petition. I would agree. Okay. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, back to the beginning and the, uh, and the bank situation. Uh, is all the billion dollars in one bank? No. Uh, the, the <laughs> 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 and, and it's so retarded. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the bank of Jason right now. Uh, no, but I'll tell you where it's at. So um, it's mostly in three banks. One is called U.S. Trust, which has no branches or ATMs here in the city of Boston. Uh, another one, and that's why many of you are like, who? But that's one. The other one is Citizens, which we all know. 
uh, and Bank of America, which we all know. We have different opinions about those banks, I'm sure. I don't want to get into it. Uh, but I can tell you none of those banks will have ever had to explain what investments they have in this investment. Uh, maybe it's not the right word, but maybe the right, the right word is what business they do in the state. How do they support our communities uh, as a business practice? And none of them have had to do that. Anyone else? Uh, I just want to say thank you for having your aid here at our meetings on a regular basis. And not only do they attend the meetings, and I say they because unfortunately there's been a change recently. I pay so little they tend to get better jobs. <laughs> <laughs> but not only, not only do they attend the meetings, well, but they it's... attend the hearings. And before they attend the hearings in the city hall, they contact us, our executive committee, and they ask us to remind them, what was your position in this particular room? I appreciate you sharing that yeah, because that's it's really important, important to follow, us. Follow, 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 follow. I appreciate you sharing that. It, it is important to us as an office. Um, before I was a city councilor, like you, I volunteered in my neighborhood. I was in the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council, and I wanted elected officials to ask us what we thought because we were volunteering like you. Right? We were, we were, move votes like you. I'm, I'm a little afraid what the vote might look like if you were voting to support or oppose me right now, but, uh, but no, thank you. No, that's where it matters, but that's why we do it. And I just want to thank all of you for it. I mean, by the way, uh, Victor over here, he's a diehard because we must call him two or three times a week to ask him what, what Nora's doing, and he's just been great to us. Yes, thank you for calling.